Well, as always, hopefully you're managing to keep well and safe in these uh, strange times that we're all living through um, at the moment. I'm going to start a new mandolin and this time I'm going to make um, a flat top mandolin and I'm going to make this to my twin point pattern. I've made I think 14 of these in the past and if you have a look on my um, archive you can see all, all the ones that I, I've done previously and you'll also see how it's sort of gently evolved over the years. Um, as part of that evolution um, a few months ago I was having a bit of a tidy up and I threw away my old external mould which then forced me to make this, um, this new one. So this is the mould in which the, uh, the rim of the twin point will be constructed and you, you, you'll obviously see this in action as, as the build progresses. Um, these two end pieces give um, extra depth for gluing the end blocks in place and the whole thing's put together with machine screws and these kind of threaded inserts so you can take it apart and put it together quite quickly and, um, and accurately. Yeah, so that's the first step. So what I'm doing at the moment is French polishing arch top number five and of course you can't just continuously polish so in between various sessions I'm putting together this kind of kit of parts for the flat top. So there is the flat top. The name's a bit deceptive really because there will actually be um, a gentle arch to it and that arch will be induced by bracing. So I've prepared the, the bracing and the flat top has much more, I guess, internal structure to it than, than, than the arch top. So that's, say, all the bracing for, for inside the, uh, the instrument. The top itself, lovely piece of European um, spruce, obviously book match, joined it down, down the centre there. And this area here has been um, sanded, coat of shellac sanding sealer, and that, what that will do is help protect this area whilst I'm working on, uh, on the rosette which will go around the, uh, the sound hole. So that's something that you'll be seeing later on in, in another video. So let's see if the microphone will pick up the, uh, the tone of the top. So you've got that kind of um, almost metallic, very low sort of resonant sound, which um, I think bodes well. So I've been working on uh, the neck blank as well. So this is obviously the main part, part of the neck, um, glued together out of three, three pieces, say always laminate for stability, and then the head and the, the, the spliced um, joint. So that'll be going together in a little while. Now this wood is fantastic. It's Cuban mahogany, and I think I've used it on, on, on most of the twin points I've actually made. And it comes from this, and this is the last piece I've got. What is it? Well, it's the lid off of, off of a Victorian, I think, baby grand piano that um, someone was scrapping and I managed to get hold of. And it's absolutely fantastic wood, probably hundreds of years old. And, and one of the things about it is, you, if you imagine the width of, of a piano, this lid was one piece. So the girth of the tree must have been absolutely huge. And um, I feel really kind of good about the fact that this piano was going to be, obviously be scrapped. And this beautiful wood, this tree is now honoured in um, another musical instrument, or actually many musical instruments, because as I say, I've been using this for a long time for necks. Um, that's the last bit that I've got. And I'm thinking of a... Uh, of, um, I don't want to chop out that last piece. But anyway, that's something for later. Well, whilst we're talking about the neck and the head, um, I've made up the head overlay, and this is from some really beautiful, highly figured Claro walnut. And um, as you can see, I've very carefully bookmatched this, so it kind of looks like one of those Rochard ink blot tests. Um, so you can look into that and imagine all manner of things going on. I think most luthiers, like myself, are a bit stupid really, because what you do 
is you buy all of this beautiful wood and uh, you store it for years and years and years. Um, and actually you get to that stage of your life where you think, am I ever actually going to use this wood? Am I going to die before, <laughs> before it's made into a musical instrument? So I've got this, this Claro Walnut, a number of sets that I think I've had for um, 15 years or so. And I keep saying, oh, I'll save that for something special. I'll save that for the future. Well, you know, Gary, the future's here now. Let's, let's get on with it and let's use it and make something nice out of it. So this is really some of the most beautiful Claro Walnut that, that you're ever going to see. And I'm going to use this um, for the back and the sides of this um, mandolin. So that's what I'm up to. Preparing to make a twin point flat top mandolin. European spruce soundboard, beautiful claro walnut back and sides and Cuban mahogany neck. So stay tuned and um, over the next few months hopefully you will see this, um, this mandolin evolve. Um, in the meantime, you take care, keep yourself safe, and um, as always, thanks for watching and taking the time. Cheers.